Hey folks, Kim from Daily Woodworking here. <clears throat> Here's the uh, turning video that I promised you. So the product that I'm about to show you is one that I take to shows with me. And it is something that we put right near the outer edge of our booth where everybody's walking by. And it is a T-handle corkscrew bottle stopper. It can be made out of wood, it can be made out of acrylic. So, unscrews, corkscrew and the bottle stopper combination uh, always does well for us at shows. Something that if you look on my website you'll find it and uh, it's on there with a price of $42. At shows, I sell it for 38 Now, my shows are regional shows, destination shows. Um, so the shows cost over $2,000 for a 10 by 10 booth. Uh, more, depending on which show I'm doing. $2,000, $2,500. But this little product right here, I will make 100 And I will probably come home with one or two at $38 a piece pays for the show pays for the food oftentimes it pays for the hotel and the gas to get there but it's uh, it's a really easy product to make and you can batch these things out and I'm going to show you the process that I use the complete process so there's no uh, this is what I do and uh, you go make your own I'm going to show you how to do it so let's get started on that. So some of the things that we're going to use right away, we're going to use uh, wax paper. We don't need much of this because we're only doing one. Uh, but to give you an idea, I usually batch out 10 at a time, minimum. Uh, oftentimes there's 20 or 30. As a matter of fact, on the other side of my shop, I have a whole bunch of these set up. We're going to be using the BS-7 from Penn State. Uh, that's everything that you need is inside of here for the actual corkscrew and stopper. I'll show you that. We're going to use a 7 millimeter drill. We're going to use some to mock our blanks. I'm going to use some uh, brass tubes. You get two per box. I have three here, um, and that's for the marking out purposes. We need markers, black or, or silver, gray, whatever it is. Uh, if you're going to do a light colored acrylic, unless you want the gold from the brass to show through in it, you're going to want to paint or use the markers to color the marker. Put a glove on your hand and just do the whole thing. Uh, we're going to use two pen blanks. These are something that I have stabilized and dyed myself. Uh, in this case it happens to be green. When I go to look for these, pull them off my shelf because I have a whole bunch of them, I'm looking for green matchup. That's a pretty strong green pattern but they're not quite going in the same direction. So I'll probably flip it like that. Take your time, because your customers are going to appreciate the extra work that you did. That's how we're going to go about it right there. I don't know if you could see what I was doing. I got two pen blanks. I only need to one pen blank. We'll do one and leave me with half of another. So I usually do three T-handles of the same wood or acrylic. Um, so I set it up like this. You see what I'm doing? No, you cannot. There we go. I put a slash through there so I know 
these two go together. And then I'm going to mark one. I'm going to mark another one. And I end up with a third. So then I'm going to put these together like this. Make sure that these ends are together. There's one. And I've got that one there. So what I try to do, that's going to be one T-handle. This is going to be number two. And this is going to be number three. I don't want to get them confused. So I mark them. Pretty easy. Again, as I've been saying all along, nothing I do is hard. Uh, so the next step is to take it to the bandsaw, which is what I use. Uh, if you use a chop saw or something like that, uh, make sure you leave enough room in between. You may not be able to do it this way. You may have to cut it with a hacksaw or hand saw or whatever. All right, so now you can see why I mocked them the way I did. One and one. And here's two and two. And here's three and three. I don't know if they went like that. Looks like they actually went like this. So we're going to take them. I'm not going to, I'm going to drill one of them. And then we'll show you how to glue it in and all of that. I'm going to get some 180 grit uh, sandpaper out here because we're going to rough up the tubes. And we're going to use a base plate wax to uh, seal off the end of it. I'll tell you all about that. We're going to use a trimmer. I've got a reamer. You'll get to see it all. Hang tight. I'm going to go over to the drill press. You want one end to be plugged. The other end doesn't need to be. This is the end that's going to receive the CA glue. So one end of each tube. If you're doing pens, oops, that didn't work. If you're doing pens, you'd use this for that too. So I told you guys I started a long time ago, back in 2000. I hadn't thought of base plate wax yet, and uh, I don't know that other wood turners had. I'm not going to say that I'm the first because I have no idea. I know I'm not the first. Uh, I used to use a potato, stick the tube into the potato and break it off so just so that that end was plugged. So to make it easy for myself, I take my two ends that I put the slash on. Not my one. You can't see what I'm doing. There we go. I put the two ends that have the slash on it together. And then I set my tube with the plug end towards the center. Just so that when I go to do this, I know what, I don't have to think about it. Because I'm going to have a whole series of these things lined up. So if I'm doing 10... 15, 20, double that number for the blanks and the tubes. So take your CA glue. By the way, you can become sensitized. doesn't matter whose CA glue it is. You can become sensitized to it. Put a fan, you know, blowing across or directly, you don't want it directly in your face, behind you. Uh, and that will blow the fumes away from you because there are going to be fumes off from this. So this is, uh, again, a product from uh, Penn State. It's a flexible CA glue. That's all it is. And it works really well. So take it and go along the inside where the tube is going to go. Take the end that's plugged and put some CA on that as well. Put it in there, twist it as you're putting it in. There's one done. Put your 
cap back on your CA glue. And the next step is going to be an Instabond. And this also is from Penn State. I'll have all of these pot numbers listed down below. And because I'm a wood turner and I have no patience, I don't want to have to wait for these things. If I have to wait for these things, it's going to take, oh, I don't know, it's going to bond very quickly on each end of this. But it's going to take a while to go through it. So. I spray it. This is usually the last thing I do at night. And then I don't have to worry about the fumes. I've got them blown away from me anyways. And then the stuff is ready for me when I come back the next morning. So we're back at it again. Uh, got number one here. I did glue up number two and three last night just to have extras, just in case things go wrong. I have set myself up with a seven millimeter uh, trimmer, carbide tooth on the end, two edges. I will caution you that if your blank is at an angle, be very cautious with applying pressure down onto this to trim it because the carbide is very aggressive and it will pull your blank apart. Then you'll be starting over. So I've got it set up in the, in the uh, drill chuck. I've got the trimmer up here. So we're just gonna start it, feed it down in. You can actually see through the of the way that it's set up you can actually see down through this so as soon as I see brass I stop and if you notice I've got a nice clean surface all the way around that if I continue to put pressure down onto that uh, with a drill press I will trim away more wood or more acrylic and it will leave the brass tube the brass tube actually starts to feed up in past the cutter so you end up with a lip and you'll can significantly shorten your blank. So let's just turn it around, do the other side. Feeds itself right down in quite nicely, provided there's nothing there like a glue block or something like that to screw it up. It's one of the reasons why we use that wax. The wax pushes the glue down through and it doesn't build up on the inside of the tube. So again, I'm looking for brass to start to show through, or shine. Almost there. Right there. So that's one side done. Let's do the other half. You don't have to apply a lot of pressure, just a little bit, and it will do the trimming all on its own. Just saw the brass show up, shut her down. This is the side I just trimmed, and if you look at the other side, now you can see all the way through it, so it pushed out that wax that I had put in the end. And turn this one up. Slow and steady pressure. And there we go. I can see the brass get shined up. That's it. Two sides trimmed. Ready for the lathe. Okay, so we're over here to the mini lathe. This is a Jet 1221 variable speed. And I'm going to use, I don't know if you can see this or not, a adjustable mandrel. And the adjustable is right here. Two adjustable wrenches, two wrenches to fit it. And this mandrel will slide in and out. So if you're doing a one barrel pen, or you're doing two barrels of pens, whatever you're doing, you can do with this. So this is simply going to go into the headstock. 
Uh, one of the things you'll notice, uh, maybe you will, you will now that I'm telling you, uh, I've got extra bushings on here. This gives me a little bit more clearance over here by the head. And this is the bushing set that we're going to use. There's one small one for one end. This is the center. This is the other end. And I'll put another one over here, but I'll explain that bushing in a second. So the first thing we're going to do before we put it on here, if we have any brass that's standing proud of where we're going to do this, it's going to cause a problem squeezing up. So we're going to trim it. We're going to use the reamer. That goes on. Middle one goes on. And that's all it takes. So then we've got the first bushing to go on. The next bushing, you'll be able to see it in the overhead. I've got a little bit of mandrel space mandrel left. Space left. Uh, otherwise, I'd have to adjust this down. I always want my bushings to be on the flat of the mandrel. I don't want it to be on the thread of the mandrel. So I've made my mandrel so that I'm completely on there with the three bushings. This extra bushing is going to cover the end of that mandrel onto the threaded part. And then it's just a matter of threading this on. Reamer out of there. So now we're all set up on the lathe. Put the headstock in. I didn't over tighten this head. I mean the tailstock. Sorry, not the headstock. I didn't over tighten the tailstock. If you over tighten the tailstock, it does this in the center of this. Even though everybody thinks, you know, it's a five or six millimeter, seven millimeter mandrel, whatever is running through there. Uh, that's not the case, it will bend it. That's one of the reasons to have an adjustable because you can replace the mandrel as they bend. I'm putting a short uh, tool rest on here. And I will tell you that when I'm turning during the daytime, I'm using a Trend Air Shield. Uh, I'm not going to use it today. And uh, demonstrations are the only time that I don't really wear a face shield. Uh, I do happen to have on my safety glasses, bare minimum, in my opinion, for safety. Uh, as I tell everybody, safety is priority number one, and it is completely up to you to work safely. If you see me doing something that you don't think is safe or you don't feel comfortable doing, please don't do it. There's more than one way to do everything that we do here. So uh, keep that in mind. So I'm going to use a tool that is a wide spindle gouge. This one happens to be made by Cotter & Sons Tool Works been experimenting with it. I really like it. It lasts a long time. I turn a lot of stuff with laminated and uh, the resin glue that's used inside of laminated tends to destroy or shorten the life of turning gouges. And for the handles I'm using Thompson's handle. Uh, I really like the way that it's not round so when I set it down onto the lathe it doesn't roll around, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but if you get a little bit of vibration in your lay, then it rolls around and goes nose first down onto your floor, you will be reshopping that very expensive tool. So that's uh, what I'm using for a tool. Cotter and Sons, I'll look up the, name of the uh, thing and put it in the description. And Thompson Tool Works handles this happens to be a 12 inch. He makes a variety of sizes, a variety of heads. Um, so, so when you, I go to rough this out, I'm going to use this to de turn the entire thing. I'm going to uh, rough it out with this. I'm going to do my finish uh, cuts and everything with this. And then I'm going to sand it on the lathe. I'm going to finish it on the lathe. And then I'm going to assemble it at the drill press. So in order to 
to rough this down. I'm not going to go in like it's a roughing gouge because that's not what it is. So I think it was Bill Grumbine years ago that came up with a rule of 345. Take your tool with your flute setting straight up and down, pull your handle 45 degrees, drop your handle 45 degrees, and turn, turn it in the direction of your cut 45 degrees. And uh, Bill was a funny guy, but that was actually a, a really good description of how to do that. Straight up and down, pull it towards you 45 degrees, drop it 45 degrees, turn it in the direction you're gonna cut 45 degrees. So in this case, I'm going to be cutting this way. So I'm dropping it 45 degrees. Am I 100% accurate on the 45 degrees? No, but it's a starting spot. Uh, so with that being said, we're gonna turn on the lathe. I've got the lathe turning at 20, about 2800. I'm comfortable with that, but if you're not, slow it down. Make sure your tool is always on the tool rest. ABC, anchor bevel cut. You come in. I'm going at an angle. I'm not going straight into it. I'm using that 45 degrees that I found. To make the cut. Notice I'm not lifting it off the tool rest. Take very long to rough this down. So I'm almost completely roughed down. I got a flat spot right there. Uh, but you notice I didn't put my fingers up here to do this. Your fingers are going to get pulled in because of the centrifugal force. It's going to try to pull it down through here. So either turn it off and look at it, put your tool on there, the tool is bouncing, then it's not completely round. What I want to do now is I want to clean off this end a little bit. There's one end of it because we trimmed it. There's the other end of it. There's the end of that one. There's the end of that one. 